Hello and welcome to another historic gameplay video here in the preview event for Modern Horizons 3 and today I'm previewing Primal Prayers. This is very similar to a 4-man enchantment that's pretty old by now. Alluren can also play creatures for free, although that one's symmetrical. Primal Prayers instead says when it enters a battlefield you get double energy. You may cast creature spells with mana value 3 or less by paying an energy rather than paying their mana cost, and we can even play them as though they had flash. So Primal Prayers is a very powerful enabler that can set up some infinite combos in this deck, and the main one we're looking at is Guide of Souls, which is a 1-2, saying whenever another creature enters a battlefield under your control, you gain a life and you get an energy. So now by playing a creature, we replace the energy we potentially spent on the Primal Prayers activating, and then we can combine Guide of Souls with Primal Prayers alongside Shrieking Drake, which is another new reprint in Arena, a 1-1 one -one with flying, and when it enters the battlefield we get to return a creature we control to its owner's hand. Interestingly, we can also return the Shrieking Drake itself. So now we simply play the Drake using an energy, it enters the battlefield gaining a life, making an energy, and then as the Drake picks itself back up, rinse and repeat, we now gain infinite life. If we have multiple Guide of Souls, we also have infinite energy for what it's worth. And then how do we close out the game against decks where infinite life is not enough? Well, we can either add Corpse Knight into the equation, which now makes the opponent lose a life whenever a creature enters, or we can potentially get there with a new Aether Revolt, a 4-man enchantment, that whenever we get one or more energy, it deals that much damage to any targets. And then it also flavorfully has Revolt, saying as long as a permanent we controlled left the battlefield this turn, if a source we control would deal non-combat damage to an opponent or permanent, it deals that much damage plus to instead. So the Revolt ability can amplify the damage we deal whenever we gain energy, and there's quite a few energy cards throughout the deck, so those can naturally synergize with Aether Revolt, but once we're actually comboing off with Shrieking Drake, it also enables Revolt by picking itself back up, so then we quickly deal more and more damage, so it's actually pretty quick to go through it, so it doesn't take too many clicks once we're there, so that's also nice. And then uh, to tie everything together, we're also playing the new Recruiter of the Guard, a 1-1 one -one that when it enters a battlefield can search your library for any creature card with toughness, 2 or less, reveal it and put it into our hand. So this can find all the creatures in our deck, including Guide of Souls and Shrieking Drake, but also our Moon Blessed Cleric. And this is how we get the consistency of finding our Primal Prayers in the first place. As a 3-2 it enters, and then we can search our library for an enchantment card, reveal it and put it on top of our deck after shuffling. So this can first and foremost find Primal Prayers. If we already have Primal Prayers, it can find Aether Revolt instead, so we also can grab our Wing Condition with it. And then, of course, Recruiter, besides getting all the combo pieces, can eventually also get our one of Corpse Knight if needed to end the game that way. So that's kind of our core game plan. And then to round things out, we've got some mana acceleration to maybe already combo on turn three. Thanks to Solar Transformer, Enter Stabbed gets three energy, so has great synergy throughout the deck. And then we can make a colorless or maybe pay an energy to make a mana of any color. So the mana fixing in a four color deck is also appreciated. I guess it's technically five colors since we even have black for Corpse Knight. And then a Servant of the Conduit is very similar, gets some energy when it enters, and then can tap, pay an energy to make a man of any color. And then we also have the full set of Attune with Aether, which can fix our colors and give us more energy. And turn 1 Attune is also great at setting up a turn 2 Amped Raptor, which might honestly be one of the best cards added in Modern Horizons. A 2-1 with First Strike, when it enters the battlefield we get 2 energy, and then if we cast it from our hand, Exile cards from the top of our library until we exile a non-land card, so very similar to Cascade. And then we may cast that card by paying an amount of energy equal to its mana value rather than its mana cost. So unlike Cascade, we can potentially hit more expensive cards, which means the Rapture could have a fail rate if we play it on turn 2 with no other energy, since now if we hit a 4 mana card we wouldn't be able to play it. But if we play turn 1 Attune, turn 2 Raptor, we could exile a 4 drop, such as our Primal Prayers or Aether Revolt, and with 4 energy we can already cast it, which of course is completely busted. But even in the mid to late game, if we have a bit of spare energy, we can more reliably cast our 3 and 4 mana cards. And then the Raptor also has a pretty cute interaction with our Moonblast Cleric, because if we already have Primal Prayers in play, we can now use Moonblast Cleric to put Aether Vault on the top of our deck, and if we have enough energy, we can use Raptor to play it for free, and then if we already have our Drake plus Guide of Souls, we can now gain infinite life as well as deal infinite damage, so that's also pretty neat. 
and then our mana base has some of these fast lands, base green since we want a tune to fix our colors afterwards, but we also have a lot of multicolor lands here with Ether Hub, which also gives us a bit more energy, can also help enable Raptor early, and then a mana confluence, as well as a Prismatic Vista, which I only recently found out is actually illegal and historic, and this can also enable Revolt on Ether Revolt for what it's worth, in addition to fetching one of each of our basic lands. No swamp since we only have a black for Corpse Knight, and there's still other ways to cast it, including of course using energy from Primal Prayers. So yeah, that's the deck. There's a lot of ways to build this Primal Prayers combo deck, including with a Green Belt Rampager, which can potentially also be cast infinite times, but only if you don't have a lot of energy to begin with, because you're forced to spend two energy to keep it in play if you have it. So I found it to be a little awkward to play with, since you naturally want to include some other energy cards in the deck. So I've uh, ended up with this Shrieking Drake build instead, but keep the Rampager in mind if you want to try a slightly different approach instead. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, what do we think of our opener? We're missing Primal Prayers. Otherwise, we have all the combo pieces. So yeah, I think we can give this a shot. We would have both infinite life gain as well as eventually infinite damage with Aether Vault. Opponent on a graveyard deck. Maybe of the uh, zombie variety. Alright, found Recruiter. So Recruiter can find Moonblast Cleric, which can find Primal Prayers. So it's gonna take us a few turns to set up, but we technically have all the cards we need. Opponent with a new White of the Reliquary, pretty nice card. And a Solar Transformer. Yeah, I think we still play the Recruiter. Fine, Moonblast Cleric. Could also kinda try and get lucky with Amped Raptor. But uh, I think I would rather go for a slow but steady approach. Now I'm still gonna need to draw lands or an extra energy source at some point. Don't mind sacking the recruiter. The white grows, can attack and then still activate. Tyvar makes a lot of sense in a deck like that. They might be running Colony Garden, providing a random token they can sacrifice. Or a Phyrexian Tower. Another Recruiter. Yeah, so the problem now is if I play a Cleric, I can find Primal Prayers. But then I know I'm not drawing a mana source, so I won't actually be able to cast it. So instead, I maybe play the Transformer. Could also go Guide of Souls into Transformer, but I don't want to put Guide in harm's way if I can avoid it. Playing Aether Revolt also an option, but I don't think 3 damage is going to be enough to deal with a white. So yeah, tricky spot. I think we just play Transformer. And then maybe try and jump with a Servant while I can. Which might save me a bit of time. Another Supplier. Moonblast Cleric also doesn't mind jumping. And a Playcrafter, that's too bad. So now they get to hit us for 10. So I can play Cleric and then hope they don't have another removal spell pretty much because next turn we would be able to go infinite, at least infinite life. Possible they can fetch up a land that makes us shuffle as well. Okay, looks like we might get to Trump.
put on Knives. The new Spy Master's Vault. Could see some play in decks like this. And Nightmare. So they can sack a creature to get one back. And they can do so only as a sorcery, so it's not going to disrupt our combo. So yeah, we should be able to just gain infinite here. So I need to protect Guide of Souls at all costs. Recruiter can maybe get another Guide of Souls. Could also get another Recruiter just to get an extra Chum Blocker or Amped Raptor could be alright. So we have some options here. I guess Recruiter for Recruiter. Just to make some Chum Blockers could be useful. And I suppose I could be gaining a life in the meantime. Probably another Guide of Souls, or I guess Corpse Knight would just win the game right now. Forgot we had that one. So yeah, Corpse Knight will do it. So now we're getting infinite life and dealing infinite damage. Drake will pick up itself. Or I could pick up a Recruiter, which then finds another Drake. It's kind of up to us. And that's the combo. So yeah, we just needed to survive until we played Primal Prayers and then we were able to combo off pretty smoothly. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand, I think. Cleric gets Primal Prayers. Still missing some of our other creatures to combo off. But we'll have good mana, and there's the Primal Prayers. So now we can use Moonblast Cleric to get our uh, copy of Aether Revolt instead. Courtyard naming Eldrassi. So we know what we're up against. Mindstone on two. Probably start with a Transformer, less likely to get removed. And then next turn we can Primal Prayers, Cleric, get Aether Revolt, and then Servant can maybe deal damage when we play it. Went with the Flesh Raker, which... Uh, can deal damage and make tokens. Alright, found a redundant primal prayers. Okay, maybe set up an ambush here since we get to play our creatures at instant speed. Ugin's Labyrinth is scary. And a Thought Not Seer can have a look at our hand. Okay, I guess we'll play the Cleric now. And then whatever they take here, we still have a way to generate two energy to trigger Aether Revolt. Taking Servant probably makes more sense, unless they have a way to remove the Primal Prayers. And a Cold Steel Hearts. Take my turn. And then uh, play Aether Revolts. 
could play Servant of the Conduit now to take out the Flash Raker. Seems alright. Let's get another one. And now a line breaker to give some creatures haste. All right, that's hitting pretty hard. Could still double block thought knots here, so we get to draw. That may be worth it, since we're trying to get to our combo here. Take 8. But then we'll need to top deck pretty well. Alright, find a Servant. Revolt has been enabled, so if we play this to get to energy, we actually get to finish off the Line Breaker. So I'll play it now while we have Revolt enabled. Okay, so now the board's a bit more manageable. Find our Guide of Souls. That can also go off with Aether Revolt. So now we're just missing one creature, the Drake. Or Recruiter for Drake would do it too. But probably no need to show them the Guide. So we have eight top decks that can win the game on the spot, basically. A Raptor into one of those would be good too. Better opponent might have some scary top decks here. Matter Reshaper, still manageable. Although we are taking damage off Flash Raker. Can try to offset it with Guide of Souls. Opponent's gonna draw. Take our turn, and there it is. Alright, combo assembled. Play Guide of Souls. Could also spend the energy to cast it, but not really need it. Play the Drake. Get an energy, which with Aether Revolt deals a damage. We'll also have Revolt enabled. Once we pick up the Drake, rinse and repeat, and it's not going to take too long here to combo off. I'll start using energy. Alright, so definitely a close one. But uh, we assembled the combo in the end. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. And we've got basically all the cards we need since Cleric gets Primal Prayers. And then we've got Drake plus Guide. So definitely keeping. Question is whether to play Guide on turn 1 or not as we draw the Primal Prayers. So now the main concern is having enough mana to cast everything. But Servant helps. And then Pun doesn't seem super aggressive, so I don't think I need the life gain from Guide of Souls. And it's not like I really need the energy either. So I think I hold it so we don't uh, get it removed. And then we can hopefully just combo off in one big turn. Cruel Celebrant. Okay, for now play Servant. And then next turn we could already win the game. If my plan was to play turn 2 Raptor, then turn 1 Guide could maybe help cast something more expensive. But uh, yeah, we should have it here. Opponent's tapped out. Play Primal Prayers. I guess what we don't have is infinite damage yet, but we can actually get there. 
if we get a little bit creative. So first, I can demonstrate infinite life here. Pick up the drake. So I could just gain infinite life right now, which would likely win us the game. But I do want to showcase a neat interaction here with Moonblast Cleric and Amped Raptor. And uh, I might be one energy short of just dealing infinite damage right now. Since we can use Cleric to put Aether Revolt on top, then play the Raptor to immediately cast it for free. And then if we had an energy left, I could still play the Drake afterwards to keep comboing. So it's possible I should have played Aether Hub for the turn just to get that one extra energy. And then we would have had guaranteed lethal. But uh, we'll give the opponent an extra turn to enjoy their synergies as well. And Nightmare. But yeah, that's why I like the Cleric with Raptor interaction, since you can sometimes just immediately play the top card to set up the kill. Put on doing some cool things with Six and Cutthroats, but yeah, it doesn't matter. Could also use Prismatic Vista to enable Revolt on Aether Revolt, which is pretty fitting. And then now just loop the Drake with itself while dealing damage with Aether Revolt, can also take out their creatures. But this is infinite damage, infinite life gain. It's gonna take a few clicks, but it's not too bad since Aether Revolt deals additional damage now. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And we've got our Primal Prayers. Transformer to make a red mana for Raptor. So, yeah, I'll give it a shot. Well, let's see what we're up against. Eldrazi found our mountain, so that's nice. Still gonna play Transformer to maybe set up a turn 3 Prayers. Which could be quite strong. One's got the Attune, so it might be more of an Aetherworks Marvel deck, perhaps. And there's our Aether Revolt, so yeah, we're just missing some of our combo creatures. And we can play Raptors in the opponent's turn as well. Opponents got their own Transformer. And I can play one now. Could also play Corpse Knight first. And find an Attune. That's more energy. Get Islands. I might want to play Aether Revolt first and then play more energy creatures afterwards. And for now hit for four. That way we basically have a bit of instant speed removal with Raptor dealing two damage with Aether Revolt. But also if we find our Moonblast Cleric I can use Raptor to maybe play an enchantment off the top, although I guess with Aether Vault already in play it doesn't matter too much. So Recruiter of the Guard would be one of our better draws, since that can find either one of our combo creatures. Opponent might be setting up an Aetherworks Marvel here. And yeah, there it is with 7 energy, so this could be bad for us. And yeah, Ulamog's probably the best hit. Accelerate two enchantments. Can deal some damage on the way out. 
find a Moonblast Cleric, so I could get a replacement Primal Prayers. Although I don't know if that does much in this spot. There's still maybe hope that we can combo, but Ulamog's a pretty fast clock. Yeah, I guess I'll uh, get another Primal Prayers here. So we can cast it. And then Corpse Knight is important to actually combo off. Could still get an attack in for essentially 4 damage. Yeah, that might be worth it. And then if we can find our Drake, I can play it, pick up the Raptor, maybe get something going. Recruiter could still be alright, since we can chain together a bunch of them. And with Corpse Knights, try to get the opponent low enough. A Rogue Refiner up to 3 energy. If they have another Transformer, they can maybe spin the wheel again. Or a tune plus another tune the narrative. There's a lot of tuning going on. Prismatic Vista, Fetchland also works with Marvel. Another Primal Prayers doesn't really do much for me. So, don't have a great attack. Another Rogue Refiner. Yeah, if they didn't hit Ulamog on the first spin, we might have been able to get there with the uh, Aether Vault dealing damage. But now they're starting to pull further and further ahead. With Vista going to the graveyard, they get another energy up to 5. And we're hoping for Recruiter of the Guard. Opponent drawing with Null Drifter. Which I guess also gives them an energy for Marvel, so they can spin again. Can't beat a second Ulamog or Giant Eldrazi. But yeah, if we find a Recruiter now, I could play it. Basically chain them together to deal damage each time with Corpse Knight, and then get the Drake, which can bounce Recruiter. So that could be lethal. But we'll see. Does Ulamog start attacking, maybe? So, 20 cards exiled, so that also limits how many recruiters we might have left. Looks like I still have three, and then two drakes, so there's still hope. And that's not it. Alright, I think we're dead here. Just Ulamog attacking, and with four cards left, there's just not going to be enough combo pieces left. The recruiters seem gone. Alright, GG's. We'll just take our draw step here just to have a peek. Another mana confluence, that's not gonna do it. Alright. So floated out a little bit near the end. Opponent had an Ugin's Binding as a bounce spell. Could have maybe interacted. And an Ottawara as well. And that'll do it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with uh, a decent hand. We've got our Primal Prayers, bit of ramp, facing turn one Halfling. It's gonna be a Brute Scale, so this is likely setting up the infinite combo with Rosie. Alright, so that's gonna be a tough matchup since we don't have a lot of creature interaction here. So play a Transformer. And then 
we can play Primal Prayers. And we can play everything at instant speed, so I don't have to go for it now. Opponent's gonna adapt. And then we can maybe set up an ambush. Play Cleric. Search our library for an enchantment, Aether Vaults. And then probably fine to go to blocks. I'm gonna save the servant until after we play Aether Revolt so we can deal some damage. And then we can also pick up Servant again with Shrieking Drake so we can deal quite a bit of damage here. So I'm not really in a hurry to do anything else. Just gotta wait until we find our uh, one drop that gains life so we can deal infinite damage with Aether Revolt. But now with Shrieking Drake and Servant we can answer another couple creatures. Shrieking Drake will also enable Revolt for Aether Revolt purposes, so we deal additional damage. Ah, opponent's also playing Recruiter, makes sense. Can find some of their combo pieces. And gets another Brute Scale. Okay, I'm just gonna take my turn, I think. Find a Raptor, that's exciting. So, could put another enchantment on top and then essentially reveal it for free with a Raptor, but I don't think there's a use in getting another Primal Prayers. So I can just play the Raptor now, and uh, I guess I can use mana to cast it, sure. And hit on a tune. That's two damage. And then I can maybe pick up the Raptor with Shrieking Drake for more card advantage as well. Do want to keep one Shrieking Drake in hand to actually combo off. Transformer, a bunch more energy. And Revolt was enabled here, so we got to deal quite a bit of damage. Might actually have close to a lethal here with all these bounce effects. But I kind of want to showcase the infinite combo if possible, so I'll just pass for now. But yeah, it looks like our opponent's going to struggle to assemble much of anything. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand seems very promising. Facing black-white. Could play... Ether Hub into Raptor, maybe cast a 3-drop for free off the top. But I think I'm gonna be patient, although now that we drew Ether Revolt, it's a little bit different. Yeah, I think I still go for Transformer into Primal Prayers next turn. Because if we didn't draw Ether Revolt, I could have put it on top of the deck with Cleric and then cast it for free using Raptor. But uh, yeah, we're just missing one of our one mana creatures to combo off, since Recruiter can get the other one. In the meantime, our opponent going off with a white with a reliquary. And there's Shrieking Drake, all right, so we can gain infinite life here, and then next turn I can deal infinite damage. So, yeah, I guess I could find a Corpse Knight with Raptor or another Recruiter to also deal infinite damage right now. Otherwise, I might be better off just passing the turn for now. And then next turn play Aether Revolt and deal infinite damage as well. 
so I don't expose any of my creatures to removal. Reclamation, get back Blood Artists. A nice uh, reprint for Arena as well. So our opponent seems mostly tapped out. Could have tried to set up an ambush with a cleric here, but there's no real need. So I'll take my draw, play Aether Volts, and that should do it. Play Recruiter. And get our Guide of Souls, which can now gain life and make energy. I'll play the Raptor just because. And that can now deal some damage, just to one for now. Find another Recruiter. So that also could have found another combo piece. Can take out a White. And then this actually gives us a bit of insurance in case our opponent did have removal for some reason. We could have gotten another Shrieking Drake, and since we get to play them at instant speed, it can kind of save a creature from removal, but opponent was tapped out anyway. And this is the infinite combo. Yeah, this deck has some very interesting lines of play. I've been pretty happy with Amped Raptor in general, and it gets to shine in this deck as well as an extra creature that we can potentially bounce to get more value plays well with the energy package, and uh, yeah, the Recruiter of the Guard has also been pretty good, allowing us to find multiple combo pieces if needed, but also just chaining them together with Primal Prayers is pretty fun. But again, there's a lot of other ways we could try to build this, as we mentioned in the introduction with Green Bell Terrain Pager, but we could also try a deck that's maybe just three colors with Guide of Souls alongside the Lich, which can then infinitely venture into the dungeon to drain the opponent to death. And then maybe instead of playing Moonblast Cleric, we could also play some other cantripping effects that dig through the deck to find our missing combo pieces, so we don't necessarily need to play a tutor effect. But uh, this was just my initial approach. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.